what's the strongest argument that people are making for um, applying the First Amendment to these companies? And then let's unpack it in, in sort of why, why is that wrong? Like, why should we not be in the business of trying to apply uh, the First Amendment to private platforms and private companies? Sure. And, and uh, I, hate, I hate this question because I, I hate the argument that much. But um, yeah, I mean, the, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fine. Uh, and, and others can probably uh, be much more fair than I will be and, and can perhaps uh, suggest other alternatives. But I think basically, you know, cases like the Prager case, uh, for example, um, sort of point to two sort of arguments. One is, well, but the platforms say that they are um, public forums. And so if they say they're public forums, then they must act like public forums. Um, so it's, it's sort of a, uh, an estoppel argument, uh, if you will. And actually, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll give three. The, the second is the, the argument I gave before that it's, it's, a, uh, you know, it's sort of like broadcast uh, platforms. This is a, uh, a you know, the, um, that's kind of a, a public good. It's a public utility. And therefore, the, uh, that's how people... Uh, all speak now. That's how expression happens. And so government has a role in making sure that the, the space for expression, which used to be the, uh, you know, the marketplace of ideas, the city park uh, has now moved online. And so government has a role in making sure that that uh, is, is protected in that context as well. Um, and then the, the third, I guess, is the, uh, the sort of, well, it's, it's heavily regulated. And if it's heavily regulated, then there's sort of this, uh, you know, government and private are getting close. And since they are getting close to one another, um, then it sort of becomes government. Um, and so the, uh, maybe there are, uh, Neil, if you, if you have other, other uh, kind of arguments that you've seen that you think are uh, worth addressing, but I think those are basically the three. And I'm happy to, after we've sort of set that up, happy to, to sort of pick apart. Uh, I, I think those are the the, the strongest ones. I, I mean, you know, the the sort of state sponsored, or uh, I, I think is kind of what you were talking about at the last part. That this is a you know serves the function of a government, uh, you know, government function, uh, and therefore must be re you know must protect the rights of people uh, as if yep. uh, it was a government. And I. Yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. So I, I, I think those are the strongest arguments. I don't think any of them is particularly strong, which is why these cases. Right. Keep losing. So. Yeah. And I, you know, so basically on, on the first, the notion that, you know, well, if, because they said we are a, a public forum, therefore the first amendment applies, um, I, I can say that I am the king that gives me no, uh, I'm, I'm, I can't convert myself into the king by saying that I am the king. Um, and, you know, Public forum uh, is is sort of a, a loosely used term, right? People say that in a lot of contexts. It has doesn't mean, you know. I therefore think that the forum doctrine of the First Amendment, which has been a thing since the early '80s, is in fact applicable to me. Um, that's uh, I, I think not, uh, you know. It, it's uh, it, I don't quite get how the estoppel sort of argument applies there. That because you've said it, then. Uh, you're sort of subjected to the First Amendment. Um, I think the the regulation idea that gets you into a, a pretty dangerous spot if just because government starts regulating something, it effectively takes it over. Um, that you know, first of all, that that starts to reach a whole lot of private conduct if you think that way. Um, there are a lot of businesses that are very much private businesses that uh, have a lot of regulations. If you if you follow crime a day. Um, there are a lot of things that a lot of businesses are told that if you do this or that uh, in a slightly different way, then you're going to be, you know, uh, in jail for that. Well, okay. Well, does that suddenly mean that because the government is heavily regulating, um, you know, how many how many peas can be in your, uh, you know, frozen peas, um, you know, how many per per pound or something, uh, that therefore pea production becomes a, uh, you know, is now a, a kind of a, a public function. Um, so I think that's problematic. Um, and I'm forgetting maybe even now what the, the third sort of, uh, sort of third argument is, but I, I think as we, as we said, it's basically, I, these are, are pretty weak arguments, um, in my view for any actual application of the first amendment to these platforms. And, you know, and frankly, from, uh, you know, the concerns of people like me who have spent a lot of time advocating for, uh, freedom of expression, 
for uh, for businesses uh, in a broad context. I mean, you have uh, cases like the Masterpiece Cake Shop case, obviously, that was was at the Supreme Court recently. You, you've got the Little Sisters of the Poor, a lot of, uh, of those cases. There are a lot of bad implications if you think that uh, that the private parties in those cases should win those cases. Um, there are a lot of bad implications of those arguments for uh, for private parties uh, sort of losing their expressive rights uh, in those contexts.